Little Steely Dan, Motley Crue mashup from the great DJ Cummerbund. Steely Dan is on that Eagles farewell tour, the long goodbye. Those tickets went on sale this morning for the show at the Romo Fijo. They've said October 17th as uh, the last Cleveland stop for the Eagles. And I will have that last pair of tickets for you in about one hour. So if you've struck out thus far, uh, you got a chance to win with me. And then um, otherwise, you'll have to go to rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com to get the details on the show. I will have another $1,000 for you in a few minutes here. About seven minutes is going to be the next keyword for you to grab a grand courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. I will have the last uh, Buzzard Bike Key for you to win. At 440. And then that'll be it for winning those buzzer bike keys on the air. Your last ditch effort is going to be with Charlie. He's going to be posted up at Rookie's Sports Bar in Parma today from 5 to 7. And he will have a lot of those bike keys for you. Do you guys ever do? I did a stand up gig at Rookie's 100 years ago. You ever do Rookie's in Parma? I've never even heard of it. It's right where like Ridge and Pearl intersect. There's a Mr. Chicken there. Used to be a Walgreens. I know that spot. I just yeah. don't. Uh, I've never done rookie. Well, that's where Charlie is going to be. Okay. So five to seven, he'll be doing that very last buzzard bike key drop. But I will have one for you to win a 440 here. Um, pound cake is out. So I will be uh, t- oh. finding a winner for that. Wow. And then those Eagles Steely Dan um, tickets a, a little bit before that. I like that Steely Dan song. Bye. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, that's one of their most popular songs. It's one of my least favorite songs of theirs. It sounds kind of like um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not bluesy. It's like it's the it's got the like it's got more rhythm. I feel like more, more groove soul, more to groove. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's definitely um, what they prided themselves on. I like it. If you listen to the show on iHeartRadio from outside Ohio. If you consume this content uh, from outside the Buckeye State, tell me where you do it. Rodney listens in Garland, Texas. Colleen is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, Nick is in San Francisco. Adam listens in Greeley, Colorado. We have a lot of Bureau Chiefs uh, in Pittsburgh. Noah's there. Rob's there. Zach's there. Rebecca is there. I was checking in. You Pittsburgh listeners will know who Albie Oxenreiter is. He's an old friend of mine. He's been a uh, a premier sportscaster there in Pittsburgh for 40 years. He's over there at Channel 11. I was texting with him this morning, checking in on him. He had open heart surgery. And this is exactly, I was talking to him. I said, my father-in-law, is. this is happening to him. He just had his second open heart surgery on Monday morning. And it's a big, big deal. Because a billion things can go wrong, right? Uh, my buddy Albie had to have it because he had a blood infection that traveled to his heart. And so that's a pretty heavy-duty recovery. My father-in-law had heart surgery a couple of years ago to clear out some lines and to replace something. And they go, now you should be good for whatever. And I guess one of the things, like, didn't take. So they had to open him back up, uh, figuring you're going to only go through it once. And so he's he's convalescing, too. Um, but it's been a rough year for Pittsburgh sportscasters. Our buddy Stan Saverin died not long ago, uh, and Albie is recovering from heart surgery. But um, a couple of very good dudes there. I was reading about how Pittsburgh is one of the cities, and <clears throat> I'm far too humble to take any amount of credit for this, but I think we might have had the most infinitesimal part of the influence here. Because it was mere weeks ago that we had people here at our window because we were giving away tickets to see Taylor Swift. It was Father's Day weekend, the Friday before, and we had dads come to the window. Bill, you might remember this. Yes, I do remember it. It was like it was a month (laughs) ago. We had dads come to the window. Was Mary here? I was here. You were here, okay. Mm -hmm. Nora was here. Yeah, my daughter was the judge, yeah. And we sent a guy, and his uh, his stepdaughters wanted Taylor Swift tickets. She wasn't coming to Cleveland, so we sent them to Pittsburgh, uh, to Akershur Stadium. And they're saying that Pittsburgh is one of the cities that benefited economically the most from Taylor Swift coming to town. That the mere uh, fact of a Taylor Swift date in your city 
provides that city with a big economic boost because people come from all over. I mean, we were, we were getting messages when we first announced that contest because we're only doing uh, one pair. Ended up last minute we had two pair. So we were able to send the runner-up too. Um, but the Taylor Swift Eras Tour is such a big deal. And people travel from all over the place because if she's not coming to your town, you got to go where she is. And no less than the Federal Reserve um, remarked that her tour has given cities where it stops a major economic boost because of the influx of fans. And Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, in particular, were two cities that benefited greatly because people flood into town. They're taking hotel rooms up or Airbnbs. They're doing all kinds of stuff. And so Taylor Swift has had... Uh, and they usually make a weekend out of it. Yeah. Like if they're, it's you have not to. just in and out for one day. If you're coming from for however far, you're like, oh, yeah, we'll go to Pittsburgh for the weekend. And okay. this is also what's going to happen on that Metallica tour. Because Metallica is doing full weekends in cities. Yeah. They're doing Fridays and Sundays. We're giving away a trip. They're, they're not coming here. They're coming to Detroit, that M72 tour. I want to go to that. I'm going to go. Well, I'm going to wait until I can see. I'm going to go see them at Soldier Field next year. But Detroit 2024. is. 2024. Yeah. Because they're in Detroit in November. This fall. Yeah. Yeah. You can still go to WMMS.com, by the way. We're still giving away those trips. Um, the Metallica M72 tour is them doing stadiums over the course of a weekend. Two shows, two different opening bands, two different sets. So they're doing Fridays and Sundays. So that's going to be a similar thing with people coming to town, having to make a weekend out of it. Unless, I guess, because I think you have to buy tickets for both nights. You can't just buy one? I don't think so. I think we talked about that when they first announced it. I think they set it up so that... Well, you probably won't. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I would think so. two different sets, why not? Because this is... They didn't announce it as your, their last tour, but that's like the speculation, right? Metallica? Yeah, because they're old. I hadn't heard about <laughs> I hadn't heard about that, but I think they still like going out and touring. Um, but they said, um, despite a slow recovery in tourism in a lot of cities, a Taylor Swift concert coming to your city is very, very good for the local economy in places like Philly and Pittsburgh. Hotels filled to capacity around the time. I mean, we were getting messages from people hoping to win tickets because they already had hotel rooms mm -hmm. and hoping to get last-minute tickets. There were people standing across the street from Akershire Stadium to listen to the concert, like massive tailgates of people who didn't have tickets but wanted to listen. And we put a bunch it's, of people. It's, it's really insane. The I mean, good for her. Taylor, That's wild. It's great. It just... It, it's crazy that there's such a huge impact. Come like there's a big drop off. I feel like between Taylor Swift and what she's doing, and pretty much everybody else. Coheed and Cambria. Coheed and Cambria is not even in the. In the <laughs> they're doing the Agora. They're not yeah, even doing right. arenas. <laughs> All right. Let me give you some money here. It's one thousand dollars, as promised. Once an hour, about thirty past, you get one of these keywords. It's a shot of cash, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Check. That's check. Enter it now at WMMS.com. One more Taylor Swift note and then I'll move on. But uh, yeah, Just make it the whole Friday show. Make, huh, making a big deal about the fact that because she got screwed out of her publishing rights or something in the first time around... She's re-recording all of her albums. So now she owns them and she can do them how she wants or whatever. And there's a girl on TikTok who got a vinyl copy of a re-recorded Taylor Swift album, her third album called Speak Now. And there's a girl over in England who bought a colored vinyl version of it, but it was clearly... Vinyl a, of color, please? I'm sorry, vi a VOC. <laughs> And it was clearly um, the wrong pressing because she played it and she's like, does anybody know what this is? Because it's just talking, like creepy, weird talking. So it's the Taylor Swift album. It's labeled properly. It's in the right uh, thing. But the audio itself 
is obviously not Taylor Swift. And people are like, do not sell this or get rid of it because anything that's been mispressed, whether it's a stamp or an album or whatever, especially Taylor Swift, you're potentially sitting on a gold mine. Mm -hmm. She looks majestic. I quit seeing people. Quit looking at the flakes of flesh and Does anyone else's Now vinyl not have Taylor Swift on it? Because I've just played mine for the first time. I got it's a girl talking about flakes of flesh. So. Orchid vinyl, she looks beautiful, she looks majestic. Speak now, not Taylor Swift. I'm going to flip it over. Quit looking at the flakes of flesh and dancing organisms. Or... Yeah, it's very, very strange. It's very creepy. strange, but yeah, I love it. And people are like, yeah, don't, um, don't get rid of that. Don't get rid of that one. Who is this? Speak now, not Taylor's version. I'm gonna flip it over and try the B side. The 70 billion people of Earth. The 70 billion people of Earth. The 70 billion people of Earth. All right, so creepy, dude. <laughs> well, it's, it's probably it's probably audio from like an EDM band or something, or I don't know. But this it's, is how horror movies start. You've horror seen? movies? Horror, yeah. You don't watch enough of those. Just because she's had a lot of boyfriends doesn't make her a horror. Yeah, horror. Mary. Horror movies. Horror movies. Where they oh. start with some, you know, you like know, like the Evil Dead when they, yes, yes, when they when they listen to the uh, read the Book of the Dead and listen to the incantations. Yeah. That's when everybody starts getting possessed. Did a virgin and cutting bleed their on arms a, off? Did a virgin bleed on a book made out of skin before mm. she played this vinyl? If it did, she left that part out, God. and I think wisely. The totality of of uh, Taylor Swift's U.S. tour could generate five billion dollars in consumer spending, which is larger than the GDP of thirty five countries. Thirty five crappy countries, <laughs> not good asshole countries. countries. <laughs> yeah. Her tour is going to hit more than one hundred thirty nations over the next year, and could end up being the single highest grossing music tour in history. So the Federal Reserve said, essentially, if the economy manages to avoid a recession, the U.S. will have, in some part, Taylor Swift to thank. At the very least, they could let her, uh, you know, ring the bell. She's going to be a billionaire in, like, the next two or three years. I was going to say, I can't believe she isn't already. Right. Well, Well, after this tour. Well, after this tour and after she releases all the albums where she's getting all the money, then, yeah, yeah, she's going to be... Billionaire, a couple times over. The nicest billionaire of all time. I was right? gonna say, I've, you never hear a bad thing about by her. By all accounts, she seems pretty legit. I, and he, I enjoyed the documentary I watched about her a few years ago. Did a Flicks and Bill episode with uh, Corey Roddick, and we enjoyed it. I didn't see that, but yeah, by all accounts, I mean somebody who because you figure even if you're a middling performer. You know, a tour takes a lot out of you. You got to sing every night. You got to dance every night. You, you're going to be tired. You, you got to change your clothes 45 times. Right. She does do a lot of outfits. Right. Like, it. just as a person, you're going to have bad days and you're going to have days where you might snap at somebody and not mean to. And there's probably some of that, but boy, you never hear about it. So either she's got an amazing PR team or she's just pretty sweet. She did get that DJ in Denver fired, though, for grabbing her ass. Good. Well, that was a good thing. You don't get to grab ass. <laughs> Can't just be running around Even grabbing butts. Even if it's just butts. where an ass is supposed to be. I know. He shouldn't have done it. Also, happy 10th anniversary to the prank we love so much. Ten years ago, I think last week, were the uh, crash of Asiana Flight 214, where uh, people called in the names of the pilots. Oh, God. To- Steve Byrne has a bit about this on one of his uh, specials. Called in the names of the pilots to uh, a local uh, KTVU in San Francisco. This was a flight that crash-landed at San Francisco's airport. And because there are just fewer and fewer people, even 10 years ago, fewer and fewer people working in newsrooms to pick up a phone or you get an intern or something and they would just pass the information to the person live on the air because it's better to be first than to be right. And then the uh, newscaster read the names of the Asian pilots on the air. Sum Ting Wong, We Too Low, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, man. 
pilots' names. <laughs> but like when you see it right away, yeah. you're not like, uh. Well, because here's what they showed. I'll show you if you're watching the live stream. That's what they showed on the Chiron there, right? Flight 214, pilots' names. So somebody just gets them the information, and within seconds, they go, put this up on the CG. Yeah. I need to have this up there now. I need the names. Some Ting Wong, We Too Low, Holy Fook. Bang, bang ding, ding ow. ow. Right. Some Ting Wong, We Too Low, Holy Fook, and Bang Ding Ow. There you go. That was July 12th, 2013. They reported that on their noon news. And I don't know if anybody got fired, uh, but um, the station reported that the end. And this is how you, you know, when people go, I don't believe anything on the news. You see where they're coming from sometimes. Yeah. Because, again, it's better to be first than to be right or to be accurate because you can always do a retraction. But the information comes so quickly that retractions are barely a thing now, unless somebody's going to get sued over it. Because right after that, the station had reported that the NTSB had confirmed that those were the names of the flight crew, which obviously was not the case. So, you know, the anchor doesn't want to go on the air because it's, you know, their face, their mouth reporting this crap. They don't know who an intern is in the back, so they don't want to look like Jagoffs. Are you sure these are the names? Somebody lies and goes, yes. The NTSB has confirmed that those are the names of the flight crew on Asiana Flight 214. There, Sum Ting Wong, We Too Low, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ow. <laughs> now imagine one of those is a person's name. Imagine the family of Bang Ding Ow, who's real <laughs> Bang Ding Ow, who's so upset because they hear that their beloved father, brother, uncle, whatever, has been killed in this flight. Imagine that. Or pick a name. Me so sad. <sighs> Bill Squire doing the Irish Cultural Festival tomorrow <laughs> night. Two shows. They still have a sense of humor. Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. Yes, yeah, Saturday right? at 9, Sunday at 7. Saturday and Sunday? Mm -hmm. Man, I'll tell you what. Maybe incarceration isn't what for you. What the hell is this music? This is Irish. It's oh, cultural. I, I mean, yeah. I know Irish music. <laughs> what the hell is this music, he says. You better get used to it now, Sonny. Grab me shillelagh. Maybe incarceration's not for you. Maybe, God forfend, Mary Santora's brand Please. of edgy comedy is not for you. Everyone. Maybe you would like to enjoy uh, some uh, Irish cultural festival with Bill O'Squire yeah. this weekend out there. How would people uh, get tickets? Uh, Irishfest.org? CleelandIrishfest.org. Hmm. All right. Something like that. There you go. <laughs> you figure it out. So if you get there and hear something like that,